Hello, I'm James Harvey, the Professor of Music Theory at the College of Southern Nevada with 5-Minute Music Theory. Start the timer and we're going to talk about something that's going to be covered in the next few videos, the concept of figured bass and figured bass symbols. Also sometimes referred to as bass position symbols. Symbols. Which can be abbreviated using the term BPS. You might hear me refer to them in different... Um, using different terminology, but I'll do my best to try to continue to uh, be consistent with the term figured bass. Now first we need to talk about what it does and what it is and what it tells us. Figure bass is just a series of numbers that appear below a bass line that indicate intervals above the bass, and, and what it actually indicates are generic intervals above the bass. Now the difference between generic intervals and specific intervals is that generic intervals are only the size fourths, fifths, seconds, whatever. Uh, there's no actual quality to generic intervals. So these numbers are just indicating intervals above the base, which you might think that doesn't tell us a lot of information, but we can indirectly determine a lot of information from a chord by looking at its figured base. So let's take a look at an example, a really simple example to start off. We're looking at a C major triad here. There would be the chord symbol of this chord. The root and the bass, because this is in root position, are the same note, that's C there. And again, figure bass symbols only tell us generic intervals above the bass. So the intervals that we have above the bass are a third and a fifth, just like we know from triad construction. So what we do is we align those vertically, and from top to bottom it's in descending order, so the highest numbers will always be on the top. They won't ever be beside each other, they'll always be lined up vertically. So the figure bass symbol for a root position triad would be 5-3. That, what that tells us is that above the bass, there's a third and a fifth, which creates a major triad. It could also be the simple interval equivalent, so it doesn't have to literally be thirds and fifths. It can also be the compound interval version of these intervals. Now the thing is that root position triads happen so commonly that we abbreviate that 5-3 by not putting anything there. So if we leave that blank, that's indicating, it's implying, that there's a root position triad there. So the common base position symbol for root position triad is just to leave this symbol blank. Sometimes we do need to write the 5-3, but that's only to cancel out another base position symbol. So now if we look at a first inversion triad, let's go ahead and take the same chord, but let's put it into first inversion. So that means the E is going to be on the bottom, like that. So now here's our bass. Remember, bass is the lowest sounding pitch, not the root. The bass and the root are not always going to be the same thing. This is a C over E. And then the intervals that we have above the bass is a 3 and a 6. So the long form version of the figured bass for a first inversion triad is 6-3. The thing is that we abbreviate this as well. Because the 3 doesn't really differentiate this inversion from the root position because both of them had thirds, we get rid of it and we just use the six. So root position is blank, first inversion uh, figure base symbol is just simply a six. So if you see that six, that means that it's a first inversion. Second inversion, we'll do the same chord, we'll do a C, but this time a C over G, G, C, E. So G is now our base, which is the fifth. That makes this a second inversion triad. We have the intervals of a fourth and a sixth. Six four is the long version and conveniently six four is the abbreviated version as well. We use both the six and the four. Nobody's ever really been able to tell me why we use the six in there. Some theory textbooks will actually abbreviate just using a four but that's not very common. Six four is the much more common way of writing this. So this would be the second inversion triad. So again the regular versions, I'll just write them really quickly. Here's root position. Uh, you can't see all of that. Let's let's put, bump that down a little bit. Clear some space. So root position is 5-3. First inversion is 6-3. Second inversion is 6-4. And then the abbreviated versions, which is the version that we'll see most commonly, is like this. Root position is blank. 
and then 6 is the first inversion, 6-4 is the second inversion. So if the, just remember that this is going to be a series of videos, so there's going to be quite a few things going on here. Um, so if this didn't make complete sense right away, continue to watch the next few videos and I'll explain a little bit greater. And also we'll have some supplemental materials for this as well. Thank you.